Good evening, and welcome to all parishioners to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish as your place of worship, of faith formation, and of outreach. We welcome all visitors. We depend on your weekly offerings and donations to keep this parish operating, so there are collection boxes, tap machines, parish envelopes, or donations online available for you. Thank you for your continued support. At this time, would you take a few moments to silence your phones? Our presider today is Monsignor Francis Puttister, and our processional hymn this afternoon can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 583, as we gather at your table, 583. Please stand. <clears throat> As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet, how to make love's victory known. Turn your worship into witness in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us your great compassion to forgive as you forgive. May we still behold your image in the world you died to save. Grant us vision, gracious spirit, to seek guests to share that feast. Where triumphant Love will welcome those who had been last or least. There no more will envy blind us, nor will pride or peace destroy. As we join with saints and angels to repeat the sounding joy. As we gather your table as we listen to your word. Help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Well, my brothers and sisters, on this uh, third Sunday of Ordinary Time, we hear in uh, various times in the history of salvation that God called human beings to proclaim <coughs> his word, to be his messengers. And the mission of God, the mission of Christ, continues today and people are still called. We are all called to proclaim the good news by our lives. It is, of course, uh, the uh, Sunday uh, recently dedicated to focusing on and being grateful for the wonderful gift of the Word of God. And at this time of the year also, we mark the week of prayer for Christian unity, being mindful that all Christians are called together to work together to proclaim the good news. As we begin to celebrate this evening, let us take a few moments and call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy.
God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. <laughs> to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty. pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. The refrain for Psalm 25, Lord, make me know your ways, can be found in the white pamphlets in your pews on page 74.
teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. from of old. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Lord, make me know your ways. Good and upright is the he instructs sinners in this way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Lord, make me A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. 
And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As Jesus went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. How many times in life have we been invited by someone to go to a place to which we've never been, or to try something new, or to take on a new responsibility? Some of life's richest experiences began with an invitation from another. The readings today speak about a call from God and how various people responded. The Lord called the prophet Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh to deliver a message. The people should turn from their sinful ways and repent, or the city would be destroyed. Jonah had fled on a ship to try to escape from the Lord. A great storm arose, and Jonah, thrown overboard, was swallowed by a large fish, which threw him up on the beach. There, Jonah decides to do what God wants, though he fears the reception he will receive in Nineveh. Surprisingly to him, the people of the great city heeded his words, turned from their evil ways, and repented. The Lord changed his mind and did not destroy the city. Paul and the early Christians believed that Christ would come again very soon, certainly within their lifetime. Paul told the Corinthians that the time was short. They should continue doing what they were doing, living married life, mourning the dead, rejoicing at happy times, buying and selling. But they should understand that the present form of this world is passing away. What filled their days would soon matter little. They should heed the Lord's call to repent and to live according to the demands of their Christian life, which Paul and others had proclaimed to them. The Gospel reading describes the call of the first disciples. Andrew and Simon left their boat and nets and followed Jesus. James and John then left their father and his crew to join them. Their call to be disciples and later apostles of the Gospel required them to change their way of life. They, and the others called later, were to learn from Jesus during his time on earth, and then to devote themselves exclusively to preaching the good news of salvation, which Jesus had taught them. But they would waver in their commitment. Peter would deny Christ three times the night before Jesus died. The others would run away and remain in hiding until after the resurrection. Their growth as servants of the Lord took many twists and turns and required constant conversion and the ever-present grace of the Holy Spirit. Jonah tried to run away when he was first called by the Lord. Paul discovered that those who had accepted Christ because of his preaching required constant warning to turn away from sin and to do the will of Christ. The disciples of Jesus were weak and fearful, needing the leadership and encouragement of Christ and the fire of the Holy Spirit before they became fearless preachers of the risen Christ. We too hear the words of Jesus, repent and believe in the good news. We may think of them as more suitable for Lent or Advent, but we must examine our lives constantly in the light of the Gospel. In the state of life to which the Spirit has led us, we must seek to listen to the will of God for us and to do it faithfully. In humility, we must repent of our sins and turn again to the gospel. This week, we observe the week of prayer for Christian unity. Jesus prayed that all who followed him 
would be one in faith and in support of one another. Much has been achieved in the recent past. We work together in many ways, and we often gather in prayer together. Though the present pandemic indeed really limits us from doing so these past few years, we too as churches and as individual followers of Christ must continue to listen to the voice of the Spirit as we journey. We do not know where we will be led, no matter what form unity may take. Like Jonah, the apostles and Christians before us were called to do, we must go forward with faith in God, though the way is unfamiliar. And indeed, as we can also see from the Gospels, God called some surprising people to deliver his message. They, of course, thought they were ill-equipped to do so. But indeed, if God calls someone to do something, God gives the grace and the capacity to do it. And of course, the scriptures indeed imply to us that people who seem in the world's eyes to be unqualified to do the work, indeed, when they do so, it is obvious it is the Lord's grace that helps them to do it. And the message is truly from God and not from people. We gather today to hear the word of God and to share in the Eucharist. The Lord gives us all we need to follow him and to answer his call. God is patient and merciful. Growth in holiness, faith, and service is not the work of a moment, but a lifelong task. Let us, each of us, go forward in faith and confidence, praying for and supporting one another. For we have all been called to proclaim the good news by our faith, by our way of life, and indeed by our love for one another and the service we do. And let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. In the name of Jesus, let us pray to God, whose kingdom has come near. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Archbishop Peter, that they may continue by the guidance of the Holy Spirit to shepherd our church through <coughs> challenging times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving to God for all those who continue to support our parish as good stewards, giving of their time, talent, and treasure for the greater glory of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our church throughout the world and for our parish community, that we may continue to build a welcoming community of witnesses to the light of Christ in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For unity among Christians in our country and around the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For global leaders who hold positions of authority, that Christ may inspire in them a new spirit of reconciliation, peace, 
and goodwill for all nations. And we pray especially for peace in Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, and Sudan. We pray to the Lord. I hear our prayer. For the homeless, the hungry, <laughs> migrants, refugees, and all who live on the margins of society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving to God for the gift of creation, that all people will see the earth as a cherished and sacred gift from our Creator, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the light of God, may be the health and hope of the sick, Patricia McAllister, and for all who provide compassionate care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died, for Father John Hanton and family, Peter and Leona Bennett and family, and deceased members of the Dillon family, and Jeffrey Muren, and we pray for comfort and strength for all who mourn the death of loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The time is fulfilled, O God. Your kingdom comes near, and Christ bids us to follow and join in your work of compassion. Let us call, let this call move our hearts and kindle our spirits so that, leaving other paths, we may follow where Jesus leads and proclaim the good news of the kingdom through Christ our Lord. Please join in our hymn for the preparation of the gifts, number 6.39 in celebrated song, The Summons, 6.39. and sisters of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift <coughs> them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and a drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom of the power and the glory, and is now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. You will only say the word, and my soul shall be free. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that people from the side sections come to receive Holy Communion first. We encourage you to sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. And if you are unable to receive Holy Communion, you are welcome to come forward for a blessing. Our communion hymn can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship. Number 601, Gather Us Together, 601. Jesus. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 563, Sing a New Song, 563. Sing a 